From deep inside the desk, I'm Andrew Richards. And I'm Gov Maharaj. And welcome to Defrag Tools, the show that takes you inside Microsoft and inside Windows. Gov and I were just geeking out about commands that we use all the time. And we kind of realized that we probably should tell you guys what our favorite commands are. So uh, console commands, where the rule is console only, so mm -hmm. no Windows, nothing else, have to be used in the last week. There's a couple we're allowed to push out to the last two weeks, three weeks. But in general, what do you use every week as part of, of, of your job? So uh, let's bring up a command prompt yep. and start into it. I think we should start with some really obvious ones that I think people might, might know, like ipconfig. Okay. Um, ipconfig is used to show you the ipconfig. Yeah, and my canonical one is ipconfig whack all. Uh, so why don't you just use the IP config straight? Well, let's take a look. So, so I tend to only use IP config straight because I tend to only want to know what my IP address is. Do you tend to know want to know more? What's the really what's your thinking behind that? So there isn't too much difference between IP config and IP config all, but IP config all will tell me more about all of the interfaces. Mm. on the system, not just your current interface. You do get the gateway address and the DNS mm -hmm. only in all right. I don't think you get them in, in ipconfig. But anyway, ipconfig, very quick way of working out um, what your networking is. I use it a fair bit for Wi-Fi and stuff to work out, you know, did it connect and all that type of stuff. Um, sure, you could use the taskbar icon and do it that way. Oh, but no. Because when, when I want my IP address, I also want to copy my IP address. Yeah. <laughs> right? Definitely. Because the very next command is you're going to ping maybe the gateway, right? Okay. And so. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at our gateway, which will show. You should make this font a little bit smaller, I think. I think you're hurting yourself. I can yourself. do that. I mean, it was great that we made it big for the show, but I think you're pushing it a bit. I think it might. Try, try 24. There we go. That's a nice bit. Double click on the taskbar. Best way of doing maximize. None of this maximize button rubbish. Double click the title bar. Oh, sorry, not taskbar, title bar. Double click on the title bar for maximize is the best. Can't remember. Is that what, is that what I did or not? That's what you did. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Rather than trying, to, <laughs> rather than trying <laughs> to use the icons. Yeah, so I did it subconsciously. <laughs> I was like, did I do that? I don't right, know. We're breaking, we're breaking our rule, though, so we've got to stay in the command prompt. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so IP config, definitely copy pasting um, uh, IP addresses and then following up with a ping command. Um, tends to be more things like you're pinging your DNS server, pinging uh, the gateway, stuff like that, just to work out. Uh, uh, what you really you can talk to. The slight problem with ping is you've got to have ICMP enabled on the server, um, and so that kind of can limit its effectiveness, right? You won't get the response packet. You were saying that you use trace route. I do use trace route. I don't tend to use it. So why do you why do you find that you use it? When I am trying to diagnose why something might be slow, uh, or I use VPNs a lot as well. So I will use trace route to make sure that I'm going to... Through a, the VPN. Through the VPN. Um, it, I mean, it, it's not something that is like all the time kind of thing, but it's for, for troubleshooting. Traceroute is... So is, Traceroute is uh, trace RT. We should probably just trace it. Right. My favorite is... Um, uh, put an E in there, my help. Put an E in it. Uh, I like to trace uh, 9msn.com. Um, just to show how big... That's an N-I-N-E, sorry. MSN, uh, no, no dot, 9msn.com. So 9msn.com is the Australian version of msn.com. And it's just a good way of seeing, if you want to see how far, how big the planet is, just see that, you know, we're in the Redmond, you know, not about opposite on the planet, but not far from it. I know that this data center is in Adelaide, which is kind of in the middle of Australia at the bottom. You're not going to get that many places that are, for us, that are more, diagonally opposite on the planet. Perth is about the, um, the other coast is about where it is. And so you can see these milliseconds are getting bigger and bigger. It takes a long time to get to Australia and back again. It does. It is, it, optic fiber only has a certain limit. And the fiber goes from Redmond, across to Hawaii, to Singapore, down through Asia, down through the top of Australia, Brisbane, Adel uh, Sydney, Melbourne, then across to Adelaide. So there's a long uh, optic fiber uh, you know, tracing across the, uh, the planet, right? So yeah, yeah trace route, that's kind of cool. You got any other favorite networking ones? What's about it? 
Oh, for networking, those are my go-tos. Yeah, me um, too. Uh, I mean, uh, NBT stat, NetStat, occasionally. One I do use is uh, uh, IP config flash DNS. Yes. And the other one is ARP minus and A asterisk, which is or minus D asterisk, whatever it is. I, I have to look up the help. So IP config flash DNS will flush your DNS entries, which is like IP DNS. ARP will flush your Mac cache. So like I know that your machine's over there on the networking because of Mac to Mac. That's actually how it really works. And so sometimes I flush the IP uh, the DNS cache and I flush the ARP cache. Do you know that the in fact, four commands for IP config to ensure that you get your proper DNS entries. No. So what you want to do is an IP config flush DNS. Okay, I'm not actually going to do it. And then what you want to do is a release. Yep. So you drop your DHCP release. And then a renew. And that's then a register a DNS. So that's the one where that's dynamic DNS, right? So it says, by the way, my machine now is at this address in the corporate DNS server it tends to be yep. uh, update the record. And the time to live on these corporate DNSs tends to be quite short, right? It, it's not like it's a year, right? No, it's, no, no, not a year. I think it's like an hour. Yeah, it's small, right? Yeah, cool. So that's networking. How about we do something to do with I don't know, environment variables? So, so set, set x. Set, set x. Set. So set, um, I tend to use set not to look at the whole thing, because if you type set, you'll find it's a lot. Yep. I tend to do something like set space p, and you don't put an asterisk on it. So it says, I guess it, it will filter it to the ones with p on the front. And particularly, I use this for the debugger environment variables, which all start with underscore. I don't mm -hmm. know if you have any set on your machine. Um, and you don't have any, but no. uh, the, the three debugger ones are all un underscore blah. So it's a very quick way of working out what your your debugger symbol path and source path and symbol cache path are. Set is per. So if you per read session. it or read or set it, <laughs> read or write it, it's per that console, right? And your inherited processes underneath it. So from, assuming that you inherit your environment from that point onwards. Yeah. So if you start. Set it and then launch an app. That that guy will get will get the the settings. If you want to be more persistent about that, there is set X, and this is kind of the way you do um, scripting. Like if you're making a batch file or something, um, you can set it at the user level, at the machine level, and the machine level. If you're doing it at the machine level, obviously you have to be elevated. And yep. so uh, set X space, and then it's like foo space bar. Uh, the set command has an equal sign in the middle. This one doesn't always throws me, always get them back to front. But set x is set x foo space bar, and that will make the foo environment variable equal to bar. And then when you start up a new command prompt, it'll be set there. Yeah. Uh, it'll be set if you restart your machine, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And if you, um, I'm not going to do it because it breaks the rules, but if you press Windows pause, which is one of the most underrated shortcut keys, most people don't even have a pause key anymore. That's, right. That's, how people, that's why it's underrated. <laughs> you need a 104 key, keyboard. It brings up the Windows property dialog, and on that page, uh, bottom left corner, is the um, hyperlink to bring up environment variables. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know of any faster way of bringing up the Windows environment variable uh, dialog than, than Windows pause. No. Uh, I mean, to me, the fastest way is... Right click and go properties. Yep. The other thing that's slowly gone out of... Um, uh, and advanced system settings. Yeah, that's the, and then you know, environment variables down the bottom. Yep. Um, the other thing that I found that's slowly fading away for shortcuts is Alt-Enter. Um, that used to be bring up properties on everything, and uh, it's, it's a pity that's kind of fading away. So uh, we've done networking. We've done environment variables. Um, I'm a fan of the where command. I don't know if you use the where I, command. I, I use it a lot, actually. Um, so the where command is kind of talking about environment variables is a way of working out kind of like how your path environment variable is working. And so where space notepad, you don't have to fill it out. It's, it, it can be, you don't have to do the dot .exe part of it. Um, and it'll tell you the search path that you're going to go through. So you, you might be trying to run something and some obscure thing runs. You go, why is, you know, why is that happening? And this will give you the list of, of places. But it is um, contingent on your path environment variable. Yeah. So if you're not able to find something using where, 
then double check your path and see that you know the thing that you're looking for is actually in your path. And same thing with sequencing. You might yes. want to reverse the order of something in your in, in your path. Uh, speaking specifically about the path, uh, there is a limit to the length, and not only is there a limit to the length, but it also takes time to go and search for things when you have very costly. It's very costly. So um, when you're, for example, launching something and it's not able to find it, or it's launching the wrong one. Uh, look for um, parsing issues in your path. Mm. Um, you can obviously check it here. You can check it uh, from the yeah. actual environment variables that the system itself knows about. Right? So you can check your path here. And this and will tell you. How we've now got this yes. new dialogue. Yes, this, this is relatively recent. I want to say, I've, what, 1703? Yeah, it was definitely 19, uh, 2017 era. Yeah. yeah, it's one of the two in there. This is very, very handy. And this, at least if you look here, this will tell you the, um, the basic path variable that is set for when your system itself starts up. So if you look here and you see a different one in your command prompt, mm. it means that um, it is likely uh, an amalgamation of what you have set for your machine and your user. Um, or depending on what spawned your CMD window, it could have also added stuff. So it means your explorer could have different things in its path set by something else. So if you have a user path, how does that work? Does it concatenate them or does it take control? It's No, the, the user path is searched first and then the system path, but it's essentially it's a concatenate. So it's actually an a abnormality with environment variables. Nearly every single environment variable a user will override the machine, and yes. that's the only one you would see. So path is a, a, a special case of that. I noticed that, if you want to bring up the dialogue, I think it was easier to see. Um, I noticed that some of them have trailing slashes on them, some of them don't. Do you know if there's a standard around that? I mean, no. obviously we support both, because obviously it's working, but um, my OCD likes it without the slashes. <laughs> I think it's cleaner, but cool. So uh, it, it, it definitely... Um, poses issues for certain types of parsers and the way that folks will add additional variables to the end, right? Because mm -hmm. in order to parse, some folks are simply looking for a semicolon. Some folks might be looking for a semicolon and a slash. Yeah. Um, the, th all of the issues that I ever see with paths are not ones where users have added variables. It's when something programmatically is added it and added it incorrectly. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to, so we've done kind of like networking, set environment variables, where, which kind of maps to the path environment variable. How about some string stuff? What's your favorite string commands? Oh, find stir, of course. Find string. Um, I have a batch file in my Windows folder. It's probably not the best place for it, but in my Windows folder called f.cmd. And it's just find string. And the reason I have it is it has slash n. So slash n tells you to um, list the line number. Mm -hmm. And so not only do I, don't I have to type fine string, I just have to type f, um, but it automatically puts on the slash n for me, which I just personally find useful. And then I just have percentage one, percentage two, percentage go, 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 go. Um, My favorite, and I do it subconsciously, is finester wax spin. So you can. I think people may not know this. You can do it both ways. You can go mm -hmm. slash s, slash p, slash i, slash n, um, or you can just shove them together. Um, the one that I do that, this is actually from last episode, so if you want to learn about Windows Update application migration logs, there's this particular words that you want to look for, this SDB driver, and um, I've this noticed This is just a regular expression search. Yeah. Right, so it's, you're looking for your term, dot star, which is any number of characters, wildcard and then true and it finds this entire line uh, and basically it's the line number part that's important here. That's the slash n I was talking about. Yep. So slash s is subdirectories. Yep. I don't know what the p is. What's the p? Is that the pattern? That makes pattern. it regex. Yep. So that's what the difference is between regex and not. I is case insensitive, yep. I for insensitive and n is line number, n for number. Uh, the other one I use is slash c. Uh, for character, explicit character. Yep. So if I'm looking for like a backslash or a quote or something like that, in particular like some of these XMLs have the you know value equals true. Well, mm -hmm. you would go slash c colon colon quote, quote. start the system <laughs> backslash quote to give you a, a escaped uh, quote. double quote value. Oh, sorry, value equals slash 
quote, true, slash, quote, quote. Um, and that way you can get these, um, uh, yeah, these harder to type ones. Um, yeah, fine string is great. I think fine string is underrated. Uh, particularly, um, do you try tend to use fine string in a chain? So I tend to do a fine string with something basic, and then I will pipe it into fine string again and mm -hmm. filter and filter and filter and filter. Now, I particularly use this for source code, and you wouldn't really think of fine string as being a source code thing, but uh, this happened yesterday. I knew there was a variable in the code to do with the PID, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't work out what it was. So I went, but I didn't know if it was process ID or PID. So I just went, um, it had a prefix, which was attribute. Attribute underscore, found all the attributes. And then I piped it in and went, find all the IDs. And then voila, I uh, had it, because it was a gap between attribute underscore and ID. Uh, I suppose I could have done it wildcard like this with a, with a pattern, but you know, old school versus new school. Well, I, it's literally the um, more than one way to do it kind yeah. of thing, right? And that's why Foundster is so powerful. Um, the, another way of doing it would be through PowerShell scripting and having it done through objects and piping it through that way because there's a lot, like PowerShell regex searching is mm -hmm. significantly more powerful than this. And particularly you can pull out fields after you've got it and you make can format tables it. and format it. The yeah. one thing that... Sort uh, it. Yeah, the one thing with Feinster is um, Unicode support. Mm. It, it gets tripped up over uh, the difference in files if it's ANSI versus Unicode. Okay. Uh, especially on earlier OSs, so something to uh, be aware of. What I've had to do uh, in earlier ones for Feinster is actually go S space D space blah blah, you know, and and actually make it filled out as it for Unicode like yeah. in order to find it correctly. Do you find that just out of personal choice? Do you write files as UTF uh, UTF eight, which is kind of like the ASCII I, table? I prefer or to sixteen. I know I prefer UTF eight. It's it's least amount of bytes. Um, more parsers for UTF-8 is more standardized across everything. Yeah, if people, UT, if UTF people make the asking mistake, it still works kind of, yeah. UTF-16 just takes up too much space. Yeah, it's a lot of zeros for no good reason, yeah. So, <laughs> artificially compresses well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, fine string, actually one of the good um, commands to do with strings, and it's slightly orthogonalized, is the clipboard. Mm -hmm. And so, once you've got one of any output, I don't care what the output is, okay, IP config, you can pipe it. Now, this is a pipe command, not the redirect. So pipe says put it into another program, and this is like fine string, pipe, fine string. This has piped it, the final one, into the clipboard. And I do this all the time. Um, I don't want to like pipe it out. The other option would be you could have used greater than like t.txt. The number of t.txt on my hard drive <laughs> is ridiculous. Um, you know, and then you just, I guess, going to open it. Mm -hmm. Actually, let's talk about that. You could then Type it is, ironically, you tend to put into t.txt these massive commands, mm -hmm. this debugger spew of it is, or output spew of, of a command. Then you fine string it, and then you put it in the clipboard again, and then it's kind of like this filtering on filtering on filtering. And it's quite powerful. Um, so there's a benefit of it either way, but I love the clipboard support. I use that all the time, all the time. Yep. Um, and talking about that, what I just said, the type command. So if you've got a text file, you just go type space, uh, text file, t.txt text that you may have generated. Um, you have said that you use what was the command you said you use? Um, echo. Echo. Yeah. So mostly in scripts. Um, you know, for uh, do you know about the at echo? If you stick the at symbol before makes it, the makes it quiet. Makes it quiet. Well, it makes the echo itself quiet. Yes. Right. So if you just have echo, you will see the command echo and then the thing that you're trying well, to echo. So we can go echo foo. And you'll see foo, but if you have it in a script, you'll actually see it echo execute foo. echo foo, yeah. yeah. And so at sign does that. So I, on all my scripts, I have at echo off, which yep. turns that off. Then I can tape everything normal, and then, um, yeah, so echo is great. And the do last you know, one. Okay. You, I have another cool one about just creating a um, text file. Uh, you could use something like type con. Oh, do this all the time. Do this all the Copy time. Copy con and, and type con. Yeah. Um, you know, foo.text, and then you just start typing, right? Foo, and you uh, do yeah. control Z. Do you copy con or type con? Uh, I do copy con. Yeah, I, I mean, I've done both. The great thing about copy con is DOS key works. Oh, jeez. 
Uh, whether you've ran out, yeah, but it would have ran out. No, I'm in an un unelevated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do it yeah, to yeah. Which is great. You're not yes. meant to be doing that. Um, yeah, I tend to use CopyCon a lot to make temporary batch files. Um, you write this, you know, huge complex command. You go, you know, I do not want to lose that command, and you there go CopyCon t.cmd, and use DOS key, um, compress up and down, and, and and stuff, and get your command there. Control-Z, keep it done. Uh, we can't miss the big one that we both use probably the most, CLS. <laughs> so we we're both laughing at this. It's like, clear screen. Um, so in the debugger, in the Windows debugger, it is .CLS. Yes, and every, every time I want to clear the screen, I will invariably do .CLS, see the error and go, crap, CLS. CLS. <laughs> <laughs> now what's annoying is that with the dot, it's not possible to alias in any way right. because it's looking for like an extension. So we can't even hide our mistakes with through some clever batch file to, to get around it. But um, yeah, CLS, um, and you said Q, Q and QD, which is quitting a debugger session rather than typing exit is the, is the other one. Well, hopefully that was uh, some enjoyable commands for you guys. We'll have them all obviously listed all below. Make them your friend, get used to them. Uh, the more you know them, the more powerful you'll be, more productive you'll be, and quite frankly, it's just fun to know. Uh, I, I'm finding them even more useful than I ever have uh, interacting with remote machines. Mm. Um, yeah, this whole cloud world has kind of forced us back into the command line. It's just so much faster. I mean, uh, I set up on all my machines uh, OpenSSH. Uh, we now include it mm. uh, as one of our optional packages. So I've now got that set up so I can do a VPN and then instead of doing the heavyweight uh, remote desktop mm. to my dev box, I can just SSH into it and do it, do whatever I need. If I want to run a build, okay, piece of cake. I don't need my full desktop environment for no. that. I just need a console. <laughs> awesome. So uh, if you have a favorite command, shove them in the uh, comments below or email us at defragtools at microsoft.com or defragshow at microsoft.com. And we might have another episode and go through those commands as well. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Take care.